Welcome, everyone. Um, we are so happy to be here with you today. I am Mimi Hicklin. I'm the program coordinator for the Charter for Compassion, and this is Marilyn Perkovich, the executive director. Um, many of you may know that we have been hosting a communities webinar series where we spotlight the work of communities across the globe. Uh, today, we're kind of stepping back a little bit and focusing on the community's program as it runs within the charter. Um, so we're excited to be doing that. First, I do want to take care of some housekeeping. We are recording the session, so if you signed up, you will receive a uh, copy of that recording. And we're also hoping that we will have time for question and answer throughout the session. So if anything comes to mind that you wanna ask, you can use your chat feature. Um, on the bottom of your screen, there are several icons. One of them is chat. And if you open that up to your right, you should be able to type in a little box. And I see that several of you are already, and we will be taking questions throughout the webinar. Um, the other option is there is a Q&A icon at the bottom of the screen that you can use to submit questions. You so know, Mimi, I should say mine's at the top of the screen. Oh. I don't know why, but you know. At the bottom or top of your screen, maybe on the side. <laughs> um, but we're here to help and uh, we will uh, do our best to get to all of your questions. So Marilyn has shared here the format for our webinar today. Um, we will first give an overview of the charter itself, everything we do and how it fits together. And then we'll focus on compassionate communities specifically. And during that segment of the programming, we'll take you through the website. And then we'll talk about learning hubs, which is a part of our big scale plan. And we'll share a little bit more about what that means and how it works. And finally, working together to bring change. How can we work with meeting in circles to strengthen and amplify the compassionate movement. So between each of these sections, we'll have a little time for question and answer. And like I said, anything that comes up, just post it in chat or in Q&A. Thanks, Mimi. You know, it's really important to understand uh, the over, overall or the holistic view of the Charter for Compassion, especially if you want to form a compassionate community. And the reality is, as you can see with the red uh, slice uh, in our circle, um, communities, cities, and anything that constitutes a community. A school can be a community. A, um, I, I'm thinking about, we have uh, two uh, nursing homes that have formed communities. Uh, neighborhoods can be communities. So not all compassionate communities and cities have to be total in the way a city might view itself. Uh, so I, I just wanted to share that with you. But you can see that um, we have compassion in the very uh, middle of our circle. And around it is uh, compassionate transformers because we really view that anyone who gets involved with the Charter for Compassion is really a person, an individual or a group, uh, for example, that really can bring about significant change within their community. Um, it isn't always done with a huge group of people. Uh, once you begin to dialogue with others, you find that very quickly you, you find yourself breaking down into interest areas. And so if we look at um, our circle here, uh, the charter has 12 very unique, uh, what we call sectors. And so if I go from uh, the red uh, and, and start going around the clock, restorative and social justice, social services, gender relations. That used to be our women and girls. We still have a component 
in uh, women, uh, in gender relations of women and girls, but you're going to find if, um, if that is of interest to you that it has uh, now uh, broken up into a number of different circles as well. Uh, science and research and then uh, religion, interface, spirituality, Fourth, so we, we now call that sector rise and arts and media, business, education, environment, peace and healthcare. So that when you begin to think about um, you know, a compassionate city or if for example, our social uh, justice group right now is really concentrating on uh, state, state sanctioned violence. Um, our gender group is trying to look at you know, what does partnership really mean uh, in various uh, circles? And if we look at, you know, what's happening in some of our other circles, and we'll talk about that later, um, you know, there are ideas that are constantly coming to the forefront and which uh, we have a lot of, um, I think, projects, programs, courses going on because of what's happening in each of those sectors. And they're really all very much, they're very important um, to forming a community. If you look beyond the planetary DNA, the compassion transformers, what we have really are our, our programs. And some of you have gone through uh, the webinars that we've done, the uh, global reads. We had one last night with uh, someone from Australia um, and we have one each month. Uh, and those global reads or the courses that we offer all support and expand on what is happening uh, within the context of each of these sectors. And then go beyond that. If you begin to think about forming a community that is a compassionate community, you're not going to do it alone. You're going to do it with partners. And when a partner becomes a local partner, they also become a international global partner to the charter. So we have, for example, and boy, I'm just going to throw these out. I think that like in education, we have uh, 400 different educational organizations in about 3,000 schools uh, because we have a charter for compassion in education. And so that we have a large number of partners in each of these sections. So I think that we're just going to stop there and see if there's any questions uh, that we can answer and, uh, and then we'll move forward. Are there questions? Mimi's, Mimi's smiling. I'm not seeing any questions, but I am just scrolling through um, the chat box and we have uh, folks from all over the world. It's pretty, pretty neat to see where everyone's joining from. Oh, I have a Q and A. Okay, oh good, good. Do only large schools tend to join the education sector? No. Um, you know, if, if you go into, um, into that sector uh, and you'll see that there, there are small schools, there are independent schools, there are uh, church-based schools. Uh, and so we have schools that go from uh, preschool, kindergarten, all through the grades, and also we have a whole section of colleges and universities around the world. I think there are about a hundred of those. And school clubs, um, portions of schools. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Should we dare to go on? Ha, I have another question. <laughs> Is the Chamber of Commerce a good resource? Civic oh. Groups such as Rotary and Kiwanis, am I pronouncing? Yes. Okay, yes. Um, in fact, um, in several places, I know definitely in India, um, the Rotary has been involved uh, in some of the programs that are being uh, you know, generated um, by, by the Charter, the Compassionate uh, Charter in Pune. 
in India. I know that there are some in the United States as well. I think that what happens is, uh, and we're gonna talk about this, uh, when you begin to think about a compassionate community, uh, it's wonderful to think about and to investigate, find out more about what's going on in your community. Well, who's doing good work? Uh, sometimes a, a compassionate initiative will just join up uh, with organizations and then get the organizations to begin to work. So in a way, uh, you know, you look at compassion in the middle, uh, in some of our compassionate communities, they're starting to be the glue uh, that really works with all these organizations and pulls them in to work together. And oftentimes they support the projects that some of these partners have already started. And in other cases, they create a new program. Okay, we're gonna take one more question and then we'll move forward. Okay. Uh, how are you telling people about this? I assume we're telling people about uh, the community's initiative. Um, well, through our website, we also have a large uh, social media gathering following. And so we like to share the work that's being done in communities via our Facebook and Instagram accounts and uh, through community networking. Um, we often call ourselves a network of networks. So we rely on our partners and community to share the work that's being done with their networks. Yeah. Um, and we just recently got involved with uh, LinkedIn and um, you know, we're small staff of people and we're here to really look at some of the best programming that's out there and we, we spend time vetting those programs so that we know uh, how effective they are. So for example, again, in education, uh, we really promote a program called Think Equal, which is for very young children, three to six. And the program is based uh, in the UK, uh, but we've been able successfully to bring that program to, um, I think, 300 schools in Mexico. Uh, and two years ago, we introduced Think Equal to our compassionate community uh, in Australia. And there are, I'm, I'm guessing right now, because I've been looking at different paperwork, I, as many as 80 schools uh, that have started uh, Think Equal uh, in their programs. So, you know, we do that kind of, in some of these sectors, uh, we, we go out uh, and find as many people who uh, would be willing to share our programming. We belong to something called the Sign Network and that's on Facebook and that's 300 organizations. Uh, so if we're doing something like on April 5th, we, do, we celebrate Golden Rule Day because the, the charter is essentially the golden rule. Um, and so on that day, uh, we broadcast uh, what we're doing. Uh, it's, it's a continuous program for 24 hours and it's, it goes through the sign network through 300 organizations. Um, so we try and find ways to really spread the word with, uh, you know, with people who are of like mind in their work. I see that we have a few more questions, but I'm thinking that we wanna move forward and that, uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> excuse me for a second. <laughs> okay, well, I, I don't have access to the, the questions at, at this point. Well, I'm, I'm back, sorry, I have, a, I have a very needy cat who is participating in this webinar, so. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, but I think that we will we'll, we'll stop again for more questions and as we move forward you may find that your questions are answered by our presentation. Um, here's a quote that many of you may well be familiar with uh, from Karen Armstrong, the Charter for Compassion founder. A compassionate city is an uncomfortable city. A city that is uncomfortable when anyone is homeless or hungry uncomfortable if every child isn't loved and given rich opportunities to grow and thrive. 
uncomfortable when as a community, we don't treat our neighbors as we would wish to be treated. And I just wanna note that we like to use the word communities in place of city often because we find it's a bit more uh, inclusive, all encompassing. As Marilyn mentioned earlier, that um, a community is really anywhere that people are gathered. It doesn't have to be based on city lines, although that can be helpful, but a neighborhood is a community, um, a congregation is a community, for example. Okay, so I think that maybe we're going to go to, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and you're going to bring up um, Charter website. And, yeah. and we're not going to go through the whole website. Uh, we are only going to look at what we've been saying, communities. And so if you look at our um, navigation bar, uh, you're going to see that communities is, the I think it's the third option, right? So we have the home page, the charter page, and then the community page. And that's, that's what we want to start with um, and looking at. So when you come to um, the community page, you're going to, you're going to have a bit of an overview of, you know, what's there. But I just want to point out that there are these three uh, illustrations blocks. And those three are part of the 17 sustainable development goals of the United Nations. So we've taken all 17 of those goals and wherever they pertain to the work of the charter, we've included them. And so when it comes to creating city initiatives, number nine on industry innovation and infrastructure, number 11 on sustainable cities and communities and 12 responsible con uh, consumption and production are the ones that pertain directly uh, to cities. And if you click on any one of those, and, and maybe, maybe you could do that, doesn't matter which one, um, what we've tried to do is to, uh, and if you could slowly scroll down, um, is to give an overview of what does this really mean uh, in regards to a community, and there's some facts and figures there, but then more so, and we have targets, and, and you can slow down there, uh, that the UN um, suggests uh, that a city, a community would think about uh, and then if you continue to go down, what we try and do is to provide additional resources uh, that you might look at uh, as they might pertain to your city. Uh, so, you know, we have that throughout our website, as I said, uh, specifically to go through, um, you know, the, uh, the, the development group. Okay. Maybe you'll scroll back up to communities and, and the overview, and we'll slowly take a, a ride down uh, of what this is really important. Uh, maybe, um, there you go, maybe stop right there. But if you ever feel like you're overwhelmed uh, with our website, and many people are because it's close to being an Encyclopedia Britannica. But again, there's a uniformity to our madness. So if you always look to your right, um, you'll see what is contained within this section of information. And so you can always go, you know, say, oh, I'm lost, where do I go? So every one of our, um, our, our parts on, on the website or our sectors uh, actually is almost a mirror of the other because we all have, every one of them have a compassion reader. Um, we, we log all of our webinars uh, if there are special newsletters so that it gives you all of the information uh, that you may need. There's some differences in each one too. So you know, if you go to, um, social justice, you're gonna find a lot of tools at social justice, a lot of uh, other organizations that you can partner with and get involved with, a lot of documents uh, that are international. And so each one of our sectors almost has 
uh, some unique quality to it. And for example, in arts, we have exhibitions, um, which are really quite informative as well as very aesthetically pleasing to the eye. And the big thing here uh, for cities is we have the toolbox. So we're gonna go down the screen uh, because this information, it's, it is maybe a, a little long, but nonetheless, it brings you into the steps that you would take uh, to be a compassionate city. So I'm gonna turn it over to Mimi. Yes, um, one of the most important things on this page is are the steps that help a community begin the conversation. So the first and maybe most important thing that we've discovered is you really can't do this work alone. Uh, you need a group, ideally a group of people from diverse backgrounds. And then you can start to sort of get to the meat and potatoes of what needs addressing, what is uncomfortable in your city. Uh, secondly, we often say that a successful city is successful because of its partners. So look for the programs or projects that are already doing the work in your community and see if you can partner with them because we are always stronger when we work together. You know, Mimi, can I, I just interrupt because yes, I, as you were talking, uh, I just thought of what happened in a community called San Pedro um, in, uh, in the state of Nuevo León in Mexico. It was a group of women who were getting together. Um, they were professional women. They, you know, some, I think one or two of them were lawyers um, and they took time off to have their children and they hadn't gone back to work yet. And they would get together and find themselves complaining about the city that they lived in and what needed to be done. And so finally they said, well, you know, guess what? We, could, we can do something. And so they, um, they formed Compassionate San Pedro. The first thing they did is kind of what, what you said. They happened to be a like uh, kind of group but they were small, I think it was five women. They're, they're now called uh, Las Madres de San Pedro. And um, so the godmothers. And they went out and they took an inventory of what needed to be done in their city. They found out, and I'm hoping I'm remembering these numbers, uh, about 1800 homes that needed to be taken care of. And then they presented it to the city and said, we want to do something about this. And they went about, those five women became 800 people because they partnered with the cement company, the lumber yards, people who could offer painting, hundreds of people who could help with uh, fixing. Uh, they have done a remarkable job of rebuilding houses, putting new roofs on, uh, and they're featured in a film that we have in this section, but uh, it, it's just a you know real example of what a few people can do, uh, and they have been doing this now for a couple of years. And so, uh, when you were talking about those three steps, it really reminded me of them. Thanks. Yeah. Um... So yeah, number three, um, we invite you with this group that you have formed to um, assess your community, sort of take stock of what's happening, what you think could be happening. Um, we have a, you'll see the PDF and I won't click it right now, but um, it's an activity where you can sort of go through uh, what's working and what isn't, what could use improvement. Uh, number four, to analyze the challenges and opportunities in your community. Uh, with that, after completing that activity and identifying what needs work, um, analyze what that really means and choose a focus that you're gonna hone in on. Uh, number five, it's really helpful to create sort of a blueprint plan with short and long-term objectives. This will help guide you initially and it'll also be a good grounding uh, document to sort of help you refocus your energies because uh, 
it can be a little overwhelming at times. So it's good to have this to refer back to. And you know, Mimi, I'm going to uh, uh, interrupt you again, uh, because I think if we go back up to number two, discover already existing programs, uh, this is where you can really hone in and collaborate. And somewhere as you're moving together, uh, you're gonna find out, and this is important, that um, you're not gonna be dragging everyone that's involved in, in this process that you created. You know, it could be you, you know, starting out with your friends and then saying who's missing from the table, who's missing from the conversation. And then all of a sudden, you know, you might find that, wow, we have three, well, I, here's what we often find. People will come and say, we have 12 things we have to do in our city. And that's where Mimi was saying, you might find yourself a little overwhelmed uh, because this is where you have to use a little discernment uh, and you have to begin in many cases to bring some local government supporters on board. So, you know, you wanna find out, you know, who would really be um, a good person from I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> well, you know, I, just, I, I wanted to, I think people get really, as you said, really kind of overwhelmed. Um, and it's, it's a way to, you know, kind of sit back and chew on these 10, uh, these 10 items that we have here. Okay. I'm sorry for jumping. No, you're actually right on track. We are on number six. Um, and I would say that while I would say most of our communities begin with a grassroots group. Uh, it's really great if you're able to share your work with your local government and discuss the possibility of a public resolution, affirmation of the charter. Um, it's possible that in these initial networking steps, you have a contact, you can get your foot into the local government and that'll be very helpful uh, in your work. Do you want to say more about that, Marilyn? I see you. <laughs> you know why? I'm, I'm just, uh, there's there's something here about not seeing the screen. Um, and so I'm not sure. Uh, Are you seeing it? I see it, but I'm not sure. Um, there was just, there was just a, a little something that uh, someone couldn't see the screen, but I, I'm seeing it, so I'm not sure. If somebody could let us know. Uh, if they're having tr uh, trouble, um, and and maybe uh, Mimi, maybe it's we'll finish up here and then yeah. we'll take some questions. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, let me just. I just want. Did that change anything? Uh, it hasn't changed anything for me, but but I guess you could see it already. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, number seven is launch a kickoff event. And this might seem a little challenging in the current age of COVID, but uh, feel free to contact us. We at the Charter can certainly speak to the effectiveness of Zoom as an online congregating tool. And we're happy to help with that kind of thing. Uh, number eight, monitor and measure your progress. Like I said, it's easy to get lost in the process and Taking regular inventory uh, is a good tool to recenter your focus. Number nine, uh, communicate with your community locally, but reach out to us at the Charter so that we can share the news more globally through webinars like this one. While no two communities are identical, it is um, a sure thing that the work that you might be doing in your community and initiative you're taking on will be helpful or insightful for another community across the world. Um, we can all help each other as we come up with best practices in communities. And we're back to the sustainable goals that Marilyn mentioned. Um, that's also sort of a good guiding tool to compare your own community goals and actions against these United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Right. You know, Mimi, why don't you just move uh, the page up uh, to the, the beginning? And, you know, we want to say that um, 
we have this incredible toolbox that was built by members of the Charter for Compassion internationally. Um, a number of years ago, um, we said, what do you need um, to people who were forming uh, compassionate cities? And so for, I think almost nine months, we had a Google doc up and people from all over the world contributed to that Google doc. And then we worked with people from the University of Kansas who've been around uh, for 30 years in the development of the community toolbox. So we took the ideas from our various uh, compassionate cities at the time. And we, I think the term, it's a very big technical term uh, called mashing. We uh, mash together the needs of the uh, charter initiatives with what the University of Kansas had in its toolbox. And we created the, the Charter for Compassion toolbox. And you can see right there on um, the very first page, you have the charter toolbox and then you have an expanded menu. And I just, uh, Mimi, if you could go to that expanded menu, um, so people could just see that as those steps that you know we just went through and trying to identify, um, you know, here are here are the issues that our compassionate cities globally uh, have been confronting and working on. So, for example, if we go up again, maybe you're just one step ahead of me, uh, like under. Um, age friendliness, uh, you know, just click on that, uh, it's number one. And so what we've tried to do um, in the charter is to say, okay, what does, you know, what are all the things that we need to know about a, a city being age friendly? Uh, London, Ontario, Canada was uh, the first city that uh, said, this is an issue for us. And so we don't, we don't want to just have you look at the issue. We really want to go through the issue and look, what does that, that issue look like? And so we've broken it down. So uh, Mimi, if you can scroll just a bit more down the page so that, you know, what does it look like with outdoor spaces and buildings and transportation and housing and social participation and respect and social inclusion, civic participation and employment, communication and information, community support and health services. So it's like, you know, all we, we continue to add to these. Uh, not only individually within each of the issues, but by adding new issues along the line as well. So I just wanted you to know that, that this, that's there. And then the other thing that's there is the toolbox itself, which helps you to, uh, with, with tools uh, that you can use for research, uh, for writing press releases from doing everything that it takes, including, uh, I, I know that, that one of the, the 10 things was regular communication between groups. And that especially means between local government as well. So I think maybe we'll stop, we'll take some questions. Um, and I, I see that there are, uh, at, oh, there's lots of questions in the question box and there's even some. Um, Oh gosh, here's the first one that I see here uh, from Patty. What types of healthcare organ organizations belong? Again, if you go to uh, under programs, uh, you'll find all of the 12 sectors and you click on healthcare. And again, use the right hand uh, side of uh, the page and you'll see all of the partner organizations that we have. And you know, um, there, are, there are partner organizations that are individual hospitals. There are healthcare providers who want to belong to the charter and, and help uh, with uh, conversation and issues. Uh, there are schools of um, 
that uh, are training schools for people in healthcare professions. The other thing that we have under healthcare, uh, and I think it's on the very first page at the bottom, uh, we have a charter for compassion for healthcare, uh, which is really um, a, a wonderful document that was soon developed uh, by uh, medical students in the Netherlands um, very soon after the Charter for Compassion was released. Um, the sign network is a question. And by the way, it, uh, Susan, uh, the sign network is S-I-N-E. Uh, you, um, you can go to Facebook and you can look S-I-N-E and you'll see that they're, um, it's divided uh, into two parts so that you can go and see uh, like any, any organization on Facebook, their regular postings. But then there is a separate one for uh, organizations that want to join. Uh, and you know, of course there is uh, a minimal fee that you pay uh, in order to, um, to have your organization uh, live stream or to have uh, material shown through the sign network. Um, okay, from Richard Green, how, what have we been doing with folks? A ton of compassionate activities occur here. Um, gosh, Richard, I. We know that compassion activities uh, are happening all over the place. And um, ah, and he continues with, I am confused by terms affirmed and partner. Thank you, uh, because that's, that's really important. Partner organizations are organizations that are that relate to any of our 12 sectors. So a partner organization can be a school. Uh, it can be a healthcare uh, service within a city. Um, it could be uh, an organization that's dedicated to peace, uh, resettlement of uh, uh, refugees, um, uh, social uh, justice organizations that are doing local uh, work uh, for the rights of individuals. Uh, it could be the local car dealer, uh, the veterinarian, uh, local artist um, or artist collective. It, it could be any group that is willing to say we want to live by the golden rule. Okay, what does it mean by affirmed? It's an affirmed, uh, there's two ways uh, to get that word is used in the charter. One is to, uh, to look at the charter document and to, if you agree with it, to sign it. So we call that signing affirming because we find that affirm is a stronger word that it means that I, I believe what I've put my hand to and I am ready to act on the golden rule. Um, which again, I'm, I'm going to say that um, the charter itself is, is much longer than the golden rule, uh, but essentially it, it contains the real message. The other way that we use affirmed is affirmed communities, affirmed cities. So um, when you begin to work um, to form a city, community, neighborhood, et cetera, uh, compassionate community, then that plan that you have um, is together introduced to your local government and the government says, the local entity uh, says, we agree with this or they debate it and they say, we've never had, um, well, you know, I'm just trying to check my memory. Uh, I think we might've had one community uh, that has not uh, affirmed the Charter for Compassion uh, with the local government, but over 450 have. Um, and it's a resolution. It's, it's a legal res resolution that is introduced to the local city council or, or whatever the equivalent of uh, the ruling group is. And that together um, the people who 
put their name to that document, affirm it. Uh, it varies by community. In some communities, they include uh, the, uh, the uh, counselor officers, or aldermen, or the assembly. Isn't that terrible? I just said alderman, uh, the alder person. Um, and so those officials sign, but then also um, there's a possibility that the local uh, grassroots organization uh, sign it as well. Uh, charters seem to sound a lot alike, but uh, ironically right now uh, in, in the age that we're uh, living in, many charters uh, are, are looking at other issues that they want to bring in. So for example, uh, maybe we'll have a chance to look at Pomona. Um, they, uh, in their charter, they ask that all of the meetings, the government meetings are, have three points to be followed and it's written into, um, into their affirmed charter. Okay. Um, just, I just wanna speak to the first part of Richard's question quickly. Um, yeah that to share what's happening in your community. Um, when you register with the charter as a compassionate community, uh, you'll, you'll hit me directly and I will process your uh, registration and get you in the system, which includes getting a page up on our website dedicated to your community. So as things are happening that you wanna share, more broadly, uh, you can reach me at Mimi at charterforcompassion.org uh, with, with that news events. Um, and I will put it up on the website under your page. Um, also, as we mentioned earlier, this webinar series in spotlighting um, specific communities has been really popular among spe specifically the community group, but a lot of people. Um, and so if you're interested in participating, being a featured community in this series, please reach out to me. We would love to work with you to uh, share the important uh, work that you're doing in your community. Um, boy, there's a lot of questions. And I think that um, we'll try and answer a few more because we already know that uh, the outline that we had, we're not gonna get through, but that's okay because we've set up uh, two additional meetings and, and we'll show those and uh, send out the links uh, for the next two meetings uh, if you, you know, still want to follow up with some of this very basic uh, information. It's great to get these questions because, you know, uh, so much happens with us that we don't even get down to the minutia that we know uh, sometimes we totally forget about, honestly. Uh, Susan, uh, no, your, uh, your community uh, does not have to be an incorporated area. Um, and sometimes I'm not even sure what that means. I mean, we have like, uh, we have villages in India. I'm, I'm not, I don't know if they're incorporated, but you know, as a village they sign. We have, um, I know that in the United States there are unincorporated areas. Um, and we do have a few of those who've been uh, part of our work. Um, I, am I missing some other questions, Mimi? Because I, I don't know why my cursor is not friendly today. Um, are you... um, I have another one from Susan here in the Q&A. Um, do we invite those who we know are more focused on money for corporations than helping people in need? Or do we try to find others who are focused and known to care about compassionate community? Okay. Um, I'm not sure to invite them to be a part as a partner to the Charter for Compassion. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Can, can, can you, you give, clarify? Can you give Susan a voice? Can she? Let me see. Does she want a voice? <laughs> yes, I have given Susan a voice. Okay. 
Yeah, Susan, can you uh, explain a little bit? Oh, oh, hi, sorry about that. Uh, I didn't realize I was on mic. Um, well, I didn't want to bring in, you know, particular politics, uh, but Marilyn, you spoke about how, uh, you know, you're trying to create compassionate communities and you have a group that, you know, all the steps that you were talking about and, um, and who do you bring in from your community to help you, you know, uh, to help with that work or you're partnering with them in, in that work and inviting them to do that work with you. And you mentioned uh, your local government and I just, um, I, I have Kevin McCarthy as my local representative and, and, and his focus is money and corporations. And, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, do I go there and talk to him and say, um, do you wanna be, uh, you know, for compassionate uh, toward uh, people in need in our community? It's clearly not part of his politics that I have seen. Yeah, I think that, um, I. Now I understand. Um, he is a national figure, obviously. Um, and I think that when we talk about compassionate communities, um, we're, we're talking, uh, you know, about the local groups. Um, I don't know if there ever will be a time. Uh, we, we have a few countries um, that have signed the Charter for Compassion. Um, on September 21st of this year, Australia uh, will have in front of it, well, it already knows it's coming, um, to pass uh, the Charter for Compassion for Australia to be the first um, compassionate continent. Um, but I, I, I don't see that we'll ever get well, not in our lifetimes, get the United States government, for example, to, to do that. Uh, however, Susan, there's hope um, because the Charter for Compassion has passed uh, the Senate in California um, yeah. and it will, it's going to be up in front of the assembly. And if it passes the assembly, then California will be the first official uh, compassionate um, state. And so I think that what you, you know, what you do is this is a basic organizing strategy. And that is you work from, you know, the grassroots, you work the ground, and you bring in, you know, partners that are doing outstanding work, mm -hmm. partners who want to do outstanding work in their community, individuals um, who, who are there and saying, gosh, I want to do something about those new refugees who came into our community. We know that they need help. We know that we have, uh, you know, a, a problem of homelessness. I mean, I can't think of any of our 450 cities who probably don't have uh, a problem of homelessness. And, you know, when, you know, as Margaret Mead says, great things can happen when a small group of people get together. And, um, and I think that, you know, this is what you call the, the groundswell. Um, and who knows, maybe Kevin McCarthy, for people who are, aren't of knowing of him, um, he is a controversial uh, US politician. Maybe he will someday sign yeah. on, who knows? He's actually my, my local representative in, in the US Congress, uh, but he's, he's actually my local. I mean, yeah. this rural area he is my local congressman mm -hmm. uh, but yeah thank you so much for your thorough answer Marilyn you're welcome Susan okay any more questions Mimi have we done it have we done that part um no <laughs> another question is have you seen any examples of cataloging the already existing programs or partners in the community um, yes, I have seen examples and there is a, there, the, oh boy, thanks for the question and for like, you know, making my brain rattle a little bit. There is an international organization uh, that many cities belong to that do cataloging of um, 
partners and of answering questions um, of what's going on in a city. There are some of our compassionate cities that are desperately trying to do some of this on their own. Like for example, the women in um, uh, San Pedro who put together their own criteria uh, for what it was that they were looking for and wanted to address. Uh, so a lot of it is done locally, but there is this uh, international uh, public survey. It, I think it, actually it's called the City Index, uh, something so simple that uh, you're all gonna Google it and say, what was she talking about? I'm, I think it is the City in Index um, and it is international. I'm, uh, I'm thinking of California, um, St. Louis, uh, communities that have local partners that we also ask partner through the International Charter for Compassion. Um, something that we can do is if you are a community looking for local partners is once again, you can reach out to me at Mimi at charterforcompassion.org and I'm happy to send a note on your behalf to partners in your area asking if they would be willing to get in contact with you to help work on the community initiative. And, and just one more word about partners. You know, we have found now, uh, Mimi and I have been together uh, working on cities and partners for the last five years, I think. And, um, we have found that cities that have a lot of partners, uh, it's, not, it's not a race game or anything, but um, our, our most involved cities are the ones that have a lot of partners and who they can turn to uh, when there is a need. And so um, I often refer back to Fayetteville, uh, I think who has 110 partners. And it, it, it's amazing when you have, you know, all these different people from the, the local restaurants and lumber companies and, um, you know, art studios and yoga studios and um, the, the local clinics. Um, I mean, it, it draws your city together. Uh, and if there's a need, you have someone to call um, and call upon. And we have someone to call upon as well. And like, okay, here's another really good, incredible example, I think, is that there was a huge problem in Botswana where um, a product, a milk product for uh, infants was introduced. Uh, but the local people were not uh, aware of what they needed to do in order to prepare uh, the water to include in the infant formula. In one year, 600 children died, over 600. And so uh, Compassionate Botswana, you know, saw this as an incredible uh, need of, you know, how were they going to do this? And so um, we, we looked at our partner list and we found a partner in Canada uh, who had, trainers on this issue in Kenya and uh, Botswana contacted the people in Kenya and the only thing that they had to do was to pay for their trip to come to Botswana to do the training and to train the trainers so that you know this could um, be remedied. The other thing that they did just because of their training they they put together a um, a whole series of, um, they called them bush mother cafes, where mothers would come to, to learn how to breastfeed. Um, and if they uh, were going to use infant formula, they, they were taught how uh, to use, use it correctly. So it's, it's a way of not only having your local partners help you, locally, but it's a way for us to be able to draw uh, from our partnerships and, and get them to work together and for each other. Uh, any more questions? I don't see any more. Okay. 
What do you think? We're gonna, I'm, I'm looking at the time. We have four minutes. Okay. Um, I don't even want to introduce the other slides, uh, but what I'm gonna do, Mimi, I'm, I think I'm just going to share uh, my, my last slide, uh, which uh, will give uh, the next calls that we have. Um, and so Friday, May 14th at 8.30 a.m. And these are Pacific times. So people who are joining us um, from other places around the world, uh, you'll have to check. But we'll, uh, as I said, anyone who registered for today's call, uh, we will send you the recording so that you will have the few uh, illustrations that we presented today. You will also will have the links to these next two calls in May and in June. The one thing that we'd like to, to see right now in the chat box is, um, you know, your interest, uh, because if you are interested in starting a compassionate city, we'd love to start a small circle and maybe get um, one or two seasoned people from other compassionate cities to, to join in. Uh, on the call, or if you're interested in a sector, we'd love to introduce you to that sector. Uh, if you wanna be a volunteer for the charter, uh, and gosh, we have an awful lot that you can help us with, um, you know, just let us know that. And so if you put that in the chat box right now, uh, that would be fantastic. And then we would make introductions uh, to some of the lead volunteers that we have who are working in those sectors. So. I just uh, paste my email in the chat box as well. Yes. Any if you want to reach out to me directly. That's great. And, um, and all of you can, I'm going to stop sharing, uh, certainly can, um, you know, download um, what's been going on in the chat box, not in the, the question and answer box, but in the chat box. So at the very bottom, you see those three little dots and uh, they'll indicate if you click on that, you'll be able to save your chat to uh, your device. I don't know if this is one more question that seemed to pop up. Um, I don't know, just, I think maybe we did answer all these, but I, I don't know. I see one more, but I, I think we answered them all. Not sure. If we haven't, you know, let us know. Okay. And please, you know, we'll just, we'll stay on uh, for just another minute or two so that if you want to put something in the chat box uh, so that give us a little work to do uh, by <laughs> being back in touch with you. Uh, we look forward to doing that. Thank you all. Uh, and hopefully we'll see some of you uh, the next time around. Bye. Maybe, is it possible to turn on the microphone so that others can just say, say goodbye? <laughs> Let's see. I was hoping I could just turn everybody's microphones on. No, I'm having, I don't know why it's not, I'm <laughs> sorry. Well, we know that we're here. We imagine you saying goodbye <laughs> in yeah. community. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.